shocking news from the Institute of Public Affairs. They have released their fourth audit on free speech at universities, and I'll tell you what, the news is not good. They looked at more than 279 policies across 42 schools and found that well, free speech is practically dead, buried, and cremated. Joining me to discuss this is Director of Research at the IPA, Daniel Wild. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us here. These are shocking findings, and some of the stuff that you talk about here, I just couldn't believe. First of all, give us the big picture. What sort of rules are we talking about? Well, nice to be with you, James. As you say, there is a free speech crisis across university campuses in Australia today. 90% uh, of universities have uh, policies which are hostile uh, to freedom of speech on campus. And look, we're talking about a range of different restrictions uh, from University of Wollongong, which uh, has guidelines against using words like mothering and fathering and wife and ladies, to another university that says you can't use caps lock uh, when you're on the internet because it might be construed as uh, shouting at somebody, uh, to restrictions on the debate about fossil fuels because it's considered inconsistent with the values of a university. <laughs> There's many such examples uh, detailed in our report. But the headline here, James, is that this is a very sad demise of once revered institutions that were bastions for freedom of speech, of intellectual inquiry and debate. The whole point of a university is for a young person to go there, to be exposed to different views, to hear different opinions, to have their views heard, but also challenged. Yes, in a in a productive environment, but yes, different views will be uh, presented. But today, but as you know, universities are, are imposing a rigid conformity on today's youth. Well, Daniel, the thing that really disturbed me too is that just sort of the normal interactions of youth could be banned here. I mean, they're talking about things like, well, I was looking at sarcasm is something that is uh, verboten at some schools. That's right, and you've touched on something important, which is the very subjective nature and the low bar that's applied here. Um, yes, somebody you know, may be offended by something that someone says or feel uncomfortable, and we should always be respectful and courteous to others, but the issue here, here is uh, the subjective nature. Anybody can find offence in anything if they're looking for it. And that means that, as you say, normal interactions are going to be limited, but so too is rigorous debate. Uh, there was a rigorous debate just a moment ago on your show, James, there about the voice to parliament. Well, that's the kind of debate that you're not going to hear on a university campus. And as we know, with that particular example, the cohort of Australians that are most likely to support the Indigenous voice to parliament are young Australians who have been or who are at university. And that's not a coincidence. That's because on that issue and many other issues, one view is presented by the faculty and the students cannot debate it. There is a woke mm. heckler's veto where anyone who tries to speak out is silenced. We know the case of Professor Peter Reid, who was sacked uh, for speaking out on, on climate of change. And this happens as a Wild. massive chilling effect. Uh, across campuses. Daniel Wild, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for all the research and work that went into this report. You can check it out at ipa.org.au. Fantastic organization, the IPA. Thank you so much, Daniel Wild.